if you didn't have Asset Core, you would then have to rely on your your asset management system, which we make it do the same thing with, or set a more reasonable uh, expectation. So we just say, yep, that is what I want, so I'm going to request that service, and again, it's going to generate the proper tickets in the background to go over and uh, and do that. It lets me review just one more time exactly what we're doing here. Your manager is going to have to approve it. And once that's out there and he's all in agreement, he saves that off. It's going to create yet another request number that he will be able to monitor in his queue. Uh, he's created two things now, so that's number uh, 121. So if Tom looks back on his home page and it refreshes here, let's uh, flip this around so it'll sort it differently. There's the issue he put in about he couldn't uh, access the Internet. And then there's the new request that he uh, asked for the Adobe uh, Adobe Pro. So if we pop over and look at it from a staff member's view here, first off, I want to refresh my queue here. As a staff member, and this should look somewhat familiar to a lot of you out there, you know, as a staff member, I have certain things that I want to keep track of and I want to keep it updated as we go. So here are some, some dashboards that I've configured of, you know, active incidents by status. You know, here's a list of the global incidents that are out there because I, as a staff member, if you pick up the phone and call me, I might just want to attach you to one of these so I don't have to create a ticket from scratch as well. Uh, as the staff member, of course, I can see the incidents, in this case, the active tickets, but I could look at this in any number of different filters, only my incidents, only ones that require approval, only software-related uh, incidents. Again, give that pretty much that option for the uh, technician to, to look at that any way that they need to. So if we go over and look at this internet uh, ticket that uh, that Tom had put in here, I can just double click on that, and it will open it up and let me see the details and whatever notes that uh, you know Tom may have uh, may have entered there. And right now I'm just kind of looking at it. I can see well he put it in. It was Brady that did that. I can see you know whatever details that he may have put into the notes there. I can see that uh, it was a failure, that it was the network, he said he couldn't connect to the network, and he did verify that he was plugged in right, so that kind of tells me something as a as a manager about what I'm going to do. So maybe I'm ready now to go start updating this ticket, so I'm going to put it in edit mode, which then starts the clock running. Very clever way they designed this ticket to where if I'm just in perusing the ticket, seeing what's going on, why should the clock be running on it when nobody's actively uh, actively working it? Now, we, we would still have date open, date close for that type of uh, metrics, but here we can actually, we're in here doing something uh, to the ticket. So again, there were the questions that were asked out and what his, uh, what his responses were about. And, and again, and not to plug asset management, but just to make you aware, if you had even just your assets loaded into here, I could click on the asset tab here and say, oh, Tom's got uh, this type of uh, Windows XP machine. Here's his MAC address, his various and sundry information that you might would want to track. And, you know, as long as you just got the assets in Service Core, I can see this. Or, again, if you were to get to the point where you wanted to fully integrate the asset core with the service core, then you could do these types of things like, you know, viewing a registry, pinging it, rebooting it, actually taking full remote control of that other device. Again, we'll cover that in much more detail in another, uh, in another session here. So here was the incident information. It's currently, you know, I'm logged in as admin, so it's currently assigned to me. But, oh, by the way, if I also wanted a, uh, another group to be part of this ticket so they'd get notifications and all, I could, uh, you know, I could certainly uh, come in and have those folks over there as well. Uh, I could, you know, while there's automatic email notification, I could also say, oh, by the way, I'd like to copy a vendor on this particular issue. So that can be done. Uh, I can check and see what the service level information is for that as far as how quickly we have to uh, respond to it. It looks like it's uh, due at uh, you know given time there, or I could ask additional questions to further drill that down. It depends on how you want to configure your SLA module there. And then, of course, I'm going to want to track my time as an eligible uh, staff member in here. Again, I've got the running clock I can use or I can just come in and record the amount of time that I'm doing it and come back later and put in another time entry, 
or more importantly, a different staff member could come in and assist on this ticket and record what their time was so we would know what the individual contribution was towards the effort as well as the overall effort that it took um, to resolve the uh, particular issue. Uh, then the other things you can do, of course, is you can link configuration items to the incident where it's important. So here we, we did link his desktop since he was having trouble getting his desktop to connect to the Internet. But if, uh, if, if, if Tom had been calling in about I can't get the email or whatever today, I could go out and I could add a link to another service, another server, uh, whatever other things that I might want to do if I've got that CMDB where I'm storing all of my CIs, which as we, we all know is not just your hardware and your software, but it's the services that you offer out to your user community as well. And then last but not least, one thing that Footprints does an excellent job at, especially in comparison to some other tools, is keeping a very, very detailed history of everything that happens to the ticket uh, as we open and close it and change values and change statuses, all of that gets recorded in the field. And since, any, since in here, if you had email conversation management going back and forth, that would be in here. If approvals, which they refer to as voting, if approvals were in here, that would show. So they do give you some options up here of, well, only show me the ticket information only or only show me the email back and forth that's gone on with the, uh, with the area here. Or again, if there had been voting or change management, that would uh, show up in here as well. So as you can see, it's a very comprehensive uh, set of what we're we're tracking uh, as we go through within here. Again, this was uh, for uh, Brady, and you could save that ticket off, and you know then uh, that date and time stamps yet another action within the system. And then I come back, obviously, as a staff member, back to my uh, back to my home screen here, so I can kind of see what's going on. I thought I would go into this one where we requested the piece of software because remember that one had a little note on that service catalog that it was going to require an approval. So if I go in and, uh, and look at the details of this guy, it'll look very similar to the ticket we just reviewed, but you'll notice that it added a little section over here in red to highlight it, which says uh, this particular request requires an approval before anything else can happen. <clears throat> So I have set myself up as an approver just to make this use case work. So I could come right in here and I could approve this. Or the other thing that we do is we can let managers who might not normally be somebody who would be in footprints, if they want to come in here and vote, they call it, on their email, we will automatically send an outbound email formatted saying, hey, Adobe Pro has been, been requested. I uh, need you to put an X hit or approve it or disapprove it or defer. And that way, these types of updates can be done right from within change management. Or if you happen to be a manager who is in the uh, 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 in footprints, they could just come in and approve it from uh, you know this step right here. And it says you know that's been now updated, and that would then you notice that goes away from the tabs now. And that would then kick off the processes. And in this particular case, you remember it said that, okay, once you do that, Asset Core is going to actually start deploying that asset. So that's actually what's happening, uh, uh, happening in the background now. So again, a number of different things that I can, uh, I can look at here. You'll notice that I am in the uh, IT service management space. We talked about lots of different groups can use this. So, you know, I've got areas for resource management. I've got areas for asset requisitioning, kind of a aqua la purchasing. Here's a facilities management group. Here's a human resources group. So interesting thing there is typically is I use the analogy of maybe the new hire onboarding. So if from within my, uh, my service catalog, if I wanted to go in and do something more sophisticated like uh, hiring a new full-time employee, again, using this service catalog, I can, you know, again, just feed back to the user, hey, this is what you're requiring, right? Here's the turnaround time and all. And once you request this service, it then says, all right, there's a series of information we obviously need to, uh, we need to know about uh, the person, you know, what's, uh, what's the name of this new person going to, uh, to be here? And I'll just use my own, uh, my own name here. 
And obviously, it's going to be important to understand, well, where are they going to work? Because what I put here as far as my organization I'm going to belong to and my role within that organization, that's going to uh, drive then choices like, okay, based on that department and your role, here are your options for technology packages, right? Desktops, mobile, you know, do you want a Mac? Some people might have access to a Mac. Others may not. It's based on these roles that we set up. And it says, oh, by the way, if you get this mobile package, you're going to get an iPhone, you're going to get your computer, you're going to get a computer bag, uh, we're going to give you Bluetooth, we're going to order you some business cards, and everybody's going to get access to SAP and VPN and, and, and Microsoft uh, here, MSDN. And by the way, if you need a Salesforce.com login as well, you could just highlight that. And that gets a lot of the information that you would need. And, you know, then there's some other stuff like, you know, home address and social security number and, you know, all of those things that would in in reality need to get filled in. I'm, for the sake of time, I'm not going to sit here and uh, and type all that information, but that ultimately would be captured. And so if you think about this and just look at this logically of the things that we're doing here, there are a number of different departments that are going to probably have to get involved with this particular uh, onboarding process here. So I'll show you one that I've already completed uh, to give you an idea of kind of you know what that would uh, what that would look like. So as I mentioned, it kicks off over here under our uh, human resources. So I'm just going to change cues, if you would, and look down here at uh, uh, the the HR queue of where tickets are. And, you know, one of the things that I had done early was I did that exact same form, and I said, okay, there's going to be a new hire for Roger East. And if I look at the details of that request, you know, it gives me the list of what we were going to do, what were we trying to do, new hire onboarding. Here's the information about what Roger would be getting. And here are all the tickets that got created automatically in the background to the facilities group, to the admin group, to the IT group, again, whatever groups you might would use. And I can let these all run in parallel, or I can put a particular sequence that the uh, the first issue has to be done to everybody's satisfactions before the next set of subtasks, kind of analogous to a work order for USDE users uh, of what has to happen yet. So all of this can be automated as we go through here and, and look at these types of issues. So the other strong component that I, I mentioned uh, at the start about that I thought you would be uh, appreciated, appreciated there is when we go back to my service desk since I've got more data there is in the reporting. So one of the things that, that you have here is a number of out-of-the-box reports, as you would mention, you know, uh, time-based, uh, you know, here's uh, incident statistics, first contact resolution, turnaround time. Again, the, the vendor always provides a number of those kind of out of the box if you wanted to do that. You know, it can come out in, in a typical tabular type thing or it can come out in a graphical type of nature, again, whatever you, uh, you, you require there. And so I'm going to look at, uh, you know, I want, uh, let's see, we'll do, actually I'm going to do a different one there. I'm going to go relative here that I'm looking for uh, the last two, just to make sure I've got some uh, decent uh, time periods here. I'll make this on year so I know we've got enough uh, data there. And it'll go out, search the incident tickets over the last ones. And since I requested that it be a graphical report, you can see that it comes back and generates it. And, and obviously, you know, as I hover over this, it gives me more detail. If I need to uh, do a drill down, I can set it for that. I can change whether it's a pie or a bar and do numbers, uh, various and sundry things as you as you look at that. The other thing, of course, you can do that's very refreshing to a lot of users is just how easy you can go out and create your own report. Again, it's kind of a drag and drop situation. So, you know, what do you want your report to be called? You've got to give it a name. Uh, how do you want the report to be for?